changes in the welfare system that are happening at the moment. There's a lot of families who are at real risk of being hit several times through different cuts and different changes. The voluntary sector has a key role to play in society and that it's got a key role to play in the economic future of society. It's not something fluffy-wuffy on the side volunteering, it's central to our economic destiny. There's massive changes in terms of public health being transferred to local authorities and I think there's a real lack of awareness out there of what some of those changes will mean. Resources, it's the age-old problem of trying to secure sustainable resources to deliver services. The issue for us is that people aren't listening necessarily to what the voluntary, has to, voluntary sector has to say, that there are lots and lots of stories of people's lives being uh, disadvantaged currently and no one's listening to that. The budget is the top priority, it's the one thing everybody is discussing. Um, the voluntary sector is no different and you have organisations chasing an ever-reducing pot of money. The sector really needs to work out what it's about and what it's doing. A lot of the talk get, ends up being about public sector contracts, how we deliver public services. I think the sector needs to refocus again and think about the beneficiaries and what it needs to do. The biggest concern for the older generation is mainly loneliness and isolation because it's got some far-reaching health implications, brings the early onset of dementia and also creates depression and as it's a as is the campaign going now, the government don't seem to be making much impact on it as a priority. At this time, uh, it's, things are getting a bit crippling now because of all these government fo funding cutbacks and lack of access to resources. So for me, really, it's access and barriers to resources. That's what I'm facing. The hope is that throughout the course of the day that you know so people can kind of maybe meet, meet each other or talk to each other and start talking about kind of how they can sort of design solutions to these problems but you know I think there's a very very real recognition that these problems are very very serious right now. There's resources, it's influence, it's impact and evidence, it's um, really making sure that you know you've got high awareness of your organisation and you stick to your values. I think you get an element of groupthink when you just get one sector coming together and I think it would be more productive to have people from a range of different sectors coming together and looking at how we can problem solve together. The main challenge I think is with less staff and more service users that demand services from the organisation. Um, I think an organisation needs to place itself strategically and also diversify their funding streams as much as they can. The sector needs to meet those challenges by, in a sense, not being scared of being brassy, yeah, not being scared of being bold. What um, the sector needs to be now is more enterprising and looking at different ways of generating income. So not just through grant funds and trusts, but other ways of fundraising, like our initiative, Local Given. I think the sector needs to engage locally with the people that it serves. It needs to engage with local authorities and the clinical commissioning groups and other public sector bodies locally. I think the voluntary sector really needs to work collaboratively together um, to make sure that they are presenting a united voice as much as they can. Don't dismiss the voluntary community faith social enterprise sector. Don't pigeonhole them too quickly. It's a complex sector. It needs a lot of time and energy put in. If you put the resources and time in now, and you, you give them a greater role and a greater influence, and you spend the time on it, you'll get big payback in the future. I think some of the, the rhetoric right now, the rhetoric around poor people, a rhetoric around workless people is really damaging. I think they really need to, really need to ease up on that, they need to stop blaming poor people for their poverty, and start thinking about the structural issues, the, the structural causes that mean that we've got so many people in poverty in this country. My message to government would be for them to be more intelligent about what it is that they're doing. They know the impact of what it is that they're doing and they're choosing to do it anyway. And it's, they're being too ideological, they need to be intelligent about it. I think my message to government is to just pause and think. You know, 
they, they keep refusing a plan B, but actually the communities out there are suffering. We saw it in the poverty figures that were presented here this morning. Um, people are struggling. We need to think about inequality. Equality needs to be back on the agenda. For me, they need to start working more closely together and, and start sharing resources. For me personally, they, they don't understand what each other are doing and they seem to be fighting each other for the same little space, for the same little pot of money. Try to do, copy each other and duplicating things instead of just sitting down and thinking, let's, let's start working more together and get done. So, yeah, we need to start working together more. Look at social enterprise and more enterprise and ways of generating income and not being afraid to ask for fees. I'm not saying that the voluntary sector is afraid to ask for fees, but many voluntary community groups won't charge fees because they think they should give their services voluntarily, but they, they're offering a valuable service that should come with a fee. It's not just about providing services and not just about getting contracts from local government. They should be seen as a key part of what makes Britain great and should be funded through a grants process as well. Come out from Whitehall and let me show you what these voluntary organisations do. Let me demonstrate with them how small amounts of money can go such a long way and help change so many people's lives.